Begin the current daf, Mesefta's Bar Mitzia, Daf Yud Zayin. Begin on the bottom of two lines up at the bottom of the Yamad, where the Gemara uh, segues into another conversation, just really finishing up what we said in the previous daf. We had answered on the, the first of the wide lines. The Gemara said, oh, our Mishnah is talking about Shehuchzik, that this uh, borrower was established to be a kafrin, a person who denies things at a different time. So therefore, he's not believed to say Parati, and that's where we say, Yagzimini, although we had said regarding a difficulty, regarding a halacha, are we chashin leperoin or not, we see that, oh, we're not concerned, we, we had said the halacha of chashin leperoin, that we're concerned that it's paid up, Rabbi Yechanan, who disagrees with Shmuel, uh, but I, we see that it is a mission of Chof that says that you give it back to the lender, uh, it tells us that we're not concerned, so it says, no, that's because the guy was established to be a, a, a liar, a guy who's not, uh, then we would say that, um, that of course, uh, we would be chashin leparayin, and uh, that's what the Gemara is going to be k- segue into say, oh, once we're talking about a guy who's a kafrin, uh, let's say a halacha related to that. Throughout the entire world. So because some of the discussion in today's are the difference between Amr if the courts tell him, say ten loy, go out and give it to him, or versus chayva to lead loy, you're, you're obligated to give it to him. <laughs> Those are two different connotations regarding where they're holding in the court case, regarding to assume if the guy paid or not. the halacha of that, if this guy's established to be a, a liar or a denier regarding that money itself, what happens if you find a loan document and the date is actually written of that same day itself, what would we suspect regarding such a document? That the, 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 the loan itself is not going to leave. If someone is making a claim after a court document is he believed, like that of a ksuba, that there are certain places that they wouldn't write a ksuba, and what's the halacha in those situations regarding suspecting uh, if, if, he, if the ksuba was paid up or not. So begin the current daf, daf on the bottom of Tezayin Rebbez, second line up at the bottom of the Yamid, the Gemara just says, parenthetically, the kafran, regarding someone who's denying, <coughs> he denied something regarding that money, uh, once we mentioned it, because the Gemara had used it to answer, like we said, the question on Rabbi Yechanan from the Mishnah Dav Chav, that he had said that we are chayshin leparayin, and uh, therefore you don't return it to the owner, um, but the Mishnah made it sound like that we do, that we don't believe the guy, and then the Gemara said it because he's a kafrin. So, name of a missile, let's say a teaching regarding that, which is the following teaching. He says, Amrulai, they tell him, say tenloi. The court paskind and they commanded to a person to give money to his uh, up to the other party. And then at a later point in time, he says, Parati, he says, I paid based on the court order. Neman, he's believed, and as Rashi points out with a Shavuos Hesus, as long as he makes a rabbinic oath that he did it, the other guy's saying, you didn't pay me yet. If he says I paid, he's believed. Now, Bo Malva, if the lender comes in front of us, Lichtayv, to write for him Adar, on, on Adar Chasa, which you mentioned on the previous daf, that regarding this, um, when they don't find the assets um, by, for the, for the uh, borrower, to collect from, so they write a, a, another chasa, which allows him to go and try to find the guy's assets and to be able to collect from. So if the lender comes to write this other chasa, in case of a we don't write and give it to him because uh, we suspect that the guy had already paid up. Now this was all if the words were say ten loy. But if let's say the courts had told him they merely ruled against him. And they said, you're liable. V'amah Paratin says, at a later point in time, I paid up. Ain and Eman, he's not believed to swear. Rather, it's called Shekeneg the Nishbamanaitl. The lender, he swears and he collects. Why? Because since it, it, what happened was that the, the guy had to, had to make a claim from him in court. So such a guy who's not quick to pay up, because until, the, until the, he had to be taken to court, until there's a total psak, such a person is not going to pay up. So they only told him, they didn't tell say ten loy. So hence, since he's a type of guy that, that is a shtipshta, he's, 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 he's an auction, so therefore, that's why we don't believe him. And, um, which places, the top tracer points out that here it sounds like that that's not a, to- a full-fledged psak, elsewhere it sounds like it is, there it's talking regarding making psharas, here it's regarding that, uh, executing the, the halacha. And therefore, if the lender comes to write, yeah, we write another chasa, we give it to him, 
again, we just see a difference regarding the uh, halacha of we, 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 do we suspect this guy of paying or not? He's a guy who's, like we're saying, didn't want to pay. And then we, we don't suspect that he's paying until the court actually said, go out and give it. Now, however, Rav Zvid Meshmed, Rav Nachman Amar, he says, meaning this was Rav, Rav Yisab Menyumi in the name of Nachman. Now we have someone else in the name of Nachman, which Rav Zvid Meshmed, Rav Nachman, he says, no, he disagrees. He says, ben te, ben te tenloi, whether the words were, go out and give it, ben loi, whether it's, you're obligated to go ahead and give it, Boma Parate says, I paid it, and he's believed. Now, Boma Avalichtav, so if the lender comes to write it, in case of an we don't write and give it to him. So he says, but if there is going to be a difference, it's not between Tzay and Chayib. Either way, the Allah is that he's believed, that he did pay. But the difference would be, he could differentiate like this. If the courts tell him, say, ten loy, go out and give it to him, and he says at a later point in time, I paid based on the court ruling. So this is what this is the case that gets interesting. Then the witnesses come along and testify that he did not pay in front of us, meaning in front of us, he claimed uh, for him to pay him up based on the court ruling, and he didn't pay. So since in front of the witnesses, he had the audacity to violate the court ruling, so he's not believed subsequently to say that I paid it not in front of witnesses. So this is where it comes into the related, the, the, the previous Gemara, which we said, let's say a teaching regarding it, because he's been established to be a denier regarding that money. He's not believed anymore to say, I paid back and I give it, I pay, I give it back until he pays back in front of the witnesses. Because he was already a denier, he was refusing to pay uh, in front of the witnesses. Now, however, if let's say the court only said, you're, you're obligated to give to him, I mean, they just made a ruling. Vama Parati says, I paid. And the Eden Eden, I say, Shalim Parati, witnesses testified, they did not pay. And the Gersoyes take out the next three words, Luchaz Vama Parati. But be there as it may, he has not been established to be a denier regarding that money. And therefore, he could swear that he paid. Because even though he didn't pay right away when the witnesses had petitioned, and like his, the witnesses says, yeah, he, when we were there, he didn't pay, that's not considered ha'aza, that's not considered as brazenness. In court, my time, what's the reason? Because since they didn't make a full fledged psak, they didn't say tay ten loy, they just said chayva tal eden loy, ishtemut yehudi kamishtam So he's just, he's just, he's just avoiding, um, he, he delaying payment because somebody thinks, adam ayni be'rabban abedini, until the, the rabbis look into my court case, look, maybe they're going to come out and decide at the end of the day that I'm not chayiv. So therefore, that's why he was delaying and pushing it off. So it's not considered as a hukzi kafrin. So again, that was the machlik is in Rav Nachman. Is there a difference between Tzay and Chayev? Or no, Tzay and Chayev, he's believed. The difference would be when you have Edim Eden Shaloi Paroi, and then subsequently says that he did pay, that would be the difference because uh, uh, that may, does that make him as a Hukzi Kafrin or not? That would depend. If it's Tzay Ten Loi, then he's a Hukzi Kafrin because you, you knew you have to pay, and you're obviously a denier on this money. We're not going to believe you subsequently that you paid. Versus Chayim, that you could say, it was only delaying the payment, but that does not make him as, a, as a, established as a kafir. A related discussion says, If a guy walks over to the guy and says, There's a hundred of my dollars, a hundred of my dinar by you. You owe me a hundred dinar. The other guy says, I, I, I have nothing of yours by me. Now, witnesses testify that he does have. Okay, meaning that he does owe him the 100 dinar. And then subsequently, a week later, he says, you know what, I paid you up. <laughs> you already established as a denier regarding that money. You had originally denied it, and the witnesses said that you do, and I can say that you, that you paid, you're not believed. This, uh, the Shabsai, the son of Rebbe Merenis, he wrote... Um, that for his daughter-in-law, a, 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 a lavush, a garment, the milsa of fine wool, b'ksubasa, in her ksuba. B'kiblale, and he accepted that responsibility um, to have to give that to her. Irkes ksubasa, so she lost her ksuba. Amalhu, he said to them, he denied now that he ever wrote in the ksuba that um, he was going to give her this itzla, this this fine garment. 
Asa Sad Ram, and then witness came along and says, In Kasabla. No, it's not true. He did write it for her. So Lasaif Amlo and he says, You know what, Pirate? I paid it up. Also, come and do it. You already have been established as a denier regarding that garment. You first wanted to say you didn't write it, and now that they said that you did, you want to say you paid it. So you're not believed until you pay up in front of witnesses. Same idea, uh, bringing, uh, illustrating with that story. Now, Amr above and Amr below, Amr Biechanan, again, continuing on this theme. If someone was obligated to swear regarding a claim, he had an obligation to, to take an oath. And he says he already swore. Witnesses testified that he did not. So he's been established as a denier regarding that oath to say that I swore until he swears in front of us. Again, a similar idea. They said this teaching in front of Rebbevo. He said to them, It's logical that this teaching of Rebbevo is specifically if he was, uh, was obligated in a in the um, in a, a court ordered oath, meaning since that the 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 witnesses were petitioning him to make a court ordered oath, and he did and he refused. That's where we say that he's not believed anymore to say, "Oh, oh I fulfilled it at a later point in time." Why? Because it's a court ordered oath. But if he obligated himself in the oath, well, he said to him, "I'll swear to you." And then the guy says, yeah, you'll swear to me? Then he brings witnesses, and the guy refused to swear. And then afterwards he says, yeah, I swore. Then Nemon, then that guy is believed, even though when he was in front of the witnesses, he pushed them away. Why? Because of it, 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 it's, it's common that a person could have such a thing, and they'll say, I don't want to do what the court didn't obligate me to do. I want to do it on my own. So that's not considered as regret and refusal. It's just pushing off. When you have a court order thing, you, you have to do it. So when, if you're refusing in front of the witnesses, you're ready to host the coffin. But when it's on your own, you, you initiated that type of oath, then that's not considered as a host the coffin. And you would be believed to say that you did swear. Now, Ahadruah, they brought this, what Rebbevo said, back, Kamid Rebbevan, who Rebbevan was the one that said this teaching and, that, and, Rebbe, and, Rebbe, and Rebbe, Rebbevo was qualifying it. Amalui said to them, yes, Anonami Bebez Nami. He says, me also. I was actually saying my teaching. Um, when it's a court ordered oath, and he agreed to the qualification that Rebbe Boaz said. Did not me so to we learned from Rebbe and Rebbe Loa and Rebbe Yechanan. He says it clearly in this version. And if someone was was obligated to make an oath in court, Bamin Shabbat he says I swore. And the witness says no, you did not swear. And and then again, because of Bamin Shabbat, but be that as it may, holds the kavanah says he's already been established to deny for that oath. We don't believe him anymore to say that oh he did take an oath. Now, continue on, on the, the theme of our Mishnah. Amr Abasi, Amr Bi'echanan. He says, Amritish Tachay Bashuk, meaning we, that's what we're talking about here with Shnaim Eichsin and Eilim Etzis that's coming up. We're talking about finding things, and we're talking about finding loan documents. So it says Rabbi Yechanan following the teaching. Amritish Tachay Bashuk, if someone finds a loan document in the street, because of the and it's a certified uh, court certified document. But, now, but it's an interesting case. Because of the Mani Boy by Yoyim. The date. Is the date that you find it is the date written in the document. So the Allah is Yahzir Labailam. Such a case, you return it to the creditor. Why? So he explains. And again, this is very important because Rabbi Yechen himself was quoted on the previous staff. If someone finds a Shtachai Bashok, even though it's written in the Hempek, we said, because we said, we said, so this teaching Rabbi is saying, no, no, here we return it to the creditor. Oh, really? Okay, why? So the more explains. Let's go through the concerns we had on the previous Dafim, what could be a problem. Again, remember, when it falls, really, we said that, Tyson says many times in this paragraph, that, that once it falls already, we start thinking problems. You know, you could always say they have these problems. The moment it falls, we think, okay, why did it fall? The guy must have been like, there's something wrong with it here. So, if it's because, look, maybe they had written it to be borrowed, but they didn't borrow it till, till six months later, or maybe didn't borrow it at all, so then we shouldn't return this to to the uh, to the lender, no, I'll cause my hempic. The uh, hempic is the court's uh, uh, a third certifying that this was given over to the lender that alone happened. So that's not a concern. Okay, fine. Even if maybe it was paid up, maybe it fell from the borrower. My concern for paying on the day itself. It has the day. the guy probably was walking out of the loan, and and then a few hours later he was he could pulled out uh, some money from his pocket, and then it out fell the document. Because it's not, we're not concerned that they got paid up already that day in the fell of the bar. 
really? Did Rechen really say that we're not concerned for payment of that day? You're the one that said the name of Rechen the following teaching. A document that a person barred with, and he paid it up. He cannot use the same document to do another loan. <coughs> why? Very important to notice why. Because the lien has already been pardoned when he paid up the first loan. The, the, the second loan was not written um, on, for this document, so that makes the loan really an oral loan. So even though like, you guys want to remember and you want to use the same document, but if you're going to collect from the Lekuches, that's going to be inappropriate because an oral loan cannot be collected from the Lekuches. And the first document was only written on the first loan. So, so therefore, because the Sheba Delin was already pardoned, you can't now take the same $100 three hours later and come back and say, ah, you know, I need $300 again. Okay, let's just use the same document. No, that can't work. Now, says the Gemara Amos, when is it that the guy paid him up that you want to say that could he go back and borrow again with the same document? If it's tomorrow or another day, not the day that it was written, well, my area, why are you saying the problem why you're saying you can't use the original document is because, oh, the lien has already been pardoned. For says, typically, it, 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 it's, it should be that even if it was written for this last loan, I mean, they forget about the fact that, oh, there was a first loan and a second loan. Even if it had it been written for this last loan, but it said a day or two earlier, that itself is sufficient to have a limuktim. It should be possible because it's a predated document. But now we're learning Mishnah the Shvis that says, Mukdam Psulin. When you have loan documents that are predated, they're invalid. So why would you say the reason Nimchal Shibudi, even if it was not, even if it was written for this last one, there was no first, it would still be problematic. Well, obviously what we're talking about is that it's on the day itself of the first loan. Ooh, Alma Pari in Obviously, people pay back on the day itself because the whole premise of Birchan's teaching of that you can't use the first one was in such a case. Amalia says, yeah. You think I said that people never pay up, that there wouldn't be such a case? I just said that we're not, it's not common to suspect such a thing. So they we're, not, we're not suspecting because for something that's not common. If it happens, Rabbi Yechon had to say that you cannot go back and do another loan with that. But that doesn't prove that it's, and therefore we would not suspect it, and therefore when we find the same date, we're giving it back to the creditor. That's one approach. Another approach of Rav he says, actually the teaching of Rabbi that says you give it back to the Bailam, is Kishachai of Maida. We're talking about where the borrower admits that he didn't pay up. The Gemara says, Yehachi might remember, what's the, what's the Chiddush of this halacha of giving it back to the lender? Ah, now the Timur would you say, hi Mifrepati. No, no, no. That he actually paid him up. The reason why he's saying, I didn't pay him up, because he wants to be able to use it to take a loan another time. But why, why, what, what's, who cares? Why don't you just write another document? No. She's concerned for the few kopecks it caused to pay the, the, the cipher. People can't forget those extra, they'll, 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 they'll spend $7,000, but extra 37 cents, that's for like, can't forget that, like, why should I give this guy to write up another thing? Therefore, he'll say, oh, it fell from the lender, when really he paid it up. Kamash Malan, no, that's what teaching it, if that's the case, the lender himself wouldn't let. Why wouldn't the lender let? Somebody thinks, no. Shami bi Rabbana, the rabbis are going to hear, that really the original loan was already paid up, which means to say that the lien that I have on the borrower has already been pardoned. And if I'm going to use this now for another loan, they're going to cause a loss to me. I'm not going to have to collect from his, from his buyers because that's going to make this second loan, a shtarikhev amakdamen, that would make it possible. Because since you're explaining like this, that we don't have eight b'chazim mezachanai, um, even this from the Mugdaman. So therefore, says the Gemara, the Chiddush in this is that even though the guy is admitting that, that that's what we're saying, that we would have thought to say that, no, maybe if he admits, it doesn't prove anything because maybe he's doing because he wants to save money. So then Taki, maybe Taki doesn't help that he's admitting. They're just saying, no, that, 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 that the, the lender, if that was the reason why the borrower is saying it, because even though he really did pay up, the lender wouldn't take it back. 
because like I'm not doing another loan with this one because if I'm going to collect, the rabbis are going to hear and they're going to say, no, no, you can't get from any Nechazim B'Shabadim because this was not on this loan. This was written for a previous loan. So therefore, that's why we're saying that um, even if the Chayiv is Maida, he, 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 yes, there is a Chiddush in that that you give it back to the lender. But then the Gemara says, what's the difference between this and... You're going to give it back to the lender. The Gemara says, what's the Chiddush? The Chayiv is Maida. He's admitting that it fell from the lender. Everyone's saying it fell from the lender. What's the Chiddush? The Chiddush is, you would have thought to say that the bar was only saying because he wants to save that 17... The 50 cents that cost the cipher to write up this new, sc- new scroll. So to save the money, he's saying, oh, it fell from the lender. But the problem is, if, if that's what the case was, then they're going to be collecting from Lekucha Yishulay Kedin. But the, that's what's saying that, no, we're not concerned for that. Because the lender wouldn't take it. It's not worth it for the lender to save 50 cents for the, what the life asked. Right? Because then he's going to lose out from collecting from Lekuchas. So, so therefore, um, that, that was the Chiddush inherent in that. But then the Gemara says, What's the difference between this halacha and the Mishnah of Yud Beis and Mabez? Mishnah said, Matzah Shtari Chayv, if someone finds a loan document, we said, if there is insurance, so then we said, Lo Yachsev, shouldn't return it. Now, we can we had explained that Mishnah that is talking about Kishachayiv Maid. We said that the borrower admits that it's, he didn't pay it up, so if, so if he admits, so why, why didn't he return it to the lender? Oh, we said, We said, look, that maybe what happened was is that they had written for the loan to happen in Nisan, but it didn't happen until six months later in Tishrei. Now, if you're going to give it to the lender, and again, really, this is a concern that you could always have, but like we said, once it falls, we, have to, we, we start thinking that these are real concerns. And then what's going to happen is the lender is going to be collecting from six-month period, which the loan never had happened yet, Inappropriately. Now, says the Gemara of we didn't say this point you're saying. We didn't say, no, why are you concerned for that? Dim Cain, if that's the case, that, no, Malva Gufi Shavak, the lender wouldn't let this. I'm not taking the document that you wrote from six months before, which is Muktim, write a new document of Tishrei. Because the rabbis might hear about this. They're going to cause a loss for me. They're not going to let this document go through. But why don't we say your svara over there on that Mishnah? I mean, they said, no, that's different. How some over there in that Mishnah, Ravcha, the guy is getting a huge gain. He's in on it. He's like, in those six months, this guy sold off a big property out in the city. He sold a ranch he had out in the, in, in the farm. So, it's 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 convenient for him with that uh, trickery that you're doing, and you know he'll take the risk. Maybe the rabbis won't hear, and I'll get that six month gain. Well, let me let me the, and he actually won't say anything, and for that we're concerned, and therefore we're not returning it to the lender. Halchavei Rabbi Yechonah's teaching where we say we do return it to the lender, even the Leslie Rafcha, the guy, the lender's not gaining anything. The story in the the document date is the same day. My my ikka the talk of lekuches. What what type of a of a of a snatching of a, of a collection is there that he's not going to have with a with a document that would you write a new one? But they're both the same day. So therefore, a document that the lien was pardoned, he's not going to allow. He's not going to let, and therefore, there's no reason for us to believe that it was paid up, and that the borrower just wants to save that three dollars that it cost to pay the cipher. Um, the lender won't be okay with that because. If he goes ahead with this saving three dollars, you realize by, by by just not being honest with the documentation, I could lose collecting from old lekuches because it's an oral loan now. It's not like a milva bishtar. So the lender's like, sorry, no, I'm not I'm not interested. If you give me six months, or if maybe we'll talk, start to talk, or whatever. But uh, that's the difference between Rebbechanan's teaching and the Mishnah Dafid base. Our related discussion of another teacher from Rebbechanan. I'm going to keep it up. I'm going to be honest. It's a toy if someone makes a claim after a court document, for example, something that's a, a stipulation of bezin, for example, like a ksuba, or feeding a wife and, and daughters, which is it's just inherent that, the, that the, the courts require a person to do. So if someone makes a claim and he says, I paid it without witnesses, so the Tim Demet Bays, 
says Rabbi Yochanan, he hasn't said anything. So says the Gemara, what's the reason? So the Gemara explains, Kol Maisabazin, all the court ordered obligations, command the dummy. It's as if the person is holding the document in their hands, and they're not believed to say that you paid. It's like they're coming with a star and saying that you owe me. That's bechlal. That is the halacha that you can't, you cannot say that I paid. Which traces the bottom one on David Zayn Menav says, my sabbatin is anything that he owes her, even though it wasn't written. For example, the 100 or 200 of, of, of a ksuba, or feeding wife and daughters after he dies, that's automatic. That you have to do, even if there's no, and you're not believed to say you paid up. Actually, Taysa asks, he says, why do you write a ksuba then? Without the ksuba, you're telling me it's a my sabbatin. He's not believed to say parati. So says that's because of the tesefes, because they add on to the ksuba. But the 100, 200, you're right. She could collect without, without a ksuba. And, and that's the halacha that Rabbi is teaching. So the Gemara asks, Amalei Reb Chia Ba'abla Reb Yechonah says, what are you even teaching us? Will I Mishnah say Nehizu? Isn't this a Mishnah Masech that's getting? It's a Mephorish Mishnah. I don't need you and I'm married to teach me this. Why? Mishnah says it with a Heitzi, a Ged, Ve'inu a Ksuba, if a woman produces a Ged, just to show that she's divorced, and without a Ksuba, Kuf a Ksuba, she collected a Ksuba. I don't need your Halacha. What are you teaching already? The Mishnah says that you don't need a Ksuba. He's, and, and, and she could collect. He's not believed to say Pagati. Amalei said to him, did loyla chas, but he says, if I didn't pick up the, the shard, the earthenware shard for you, so you wouldn't find a pearl that's beneath it. I mean, to say, the Shays discusses it, what's the, what's the shards on the bottom of the ocean? There's these big rocks. But um, meantime, it says, in the bottom of the ocean, there's these wide rocks. They look like charas, and like earthenware shards, and beneath them are these pearls. And um, that's what he said. Like, yeah, you, you see it now because I, I showed it to you, but without me, Right, everything's there in the Torah, but you needed me to, to reveal it. Where Amma <laughs> Bai Bai says, he says, my Maganisa, what's this pearl already that, that you're talking about? <laughs> you're both wrong. Meaning, you're, you're saying it, halacha, and then you're saying it's so obvious in Mishnah Gittin. So Bai, it's not true. There's no pearl here. There's no such halacha. Because Dilma, maybe the Mishnah Gittin is told, it's a place where you don't write a ksuba, you rely on the stipulation of the courts, and yes, you could always collect until the husband produces a receipt. Because the get, the, 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 that this, that the, 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 it testifies that she was divorced, Ha'inu ksubasa, that is her ksuba, that, that proves that he owes her ksuba. But that's only when you don't write a ksuba. ksuba, but in the place that you write a ksuba, either kid ksuba kafir, maybe it's not true, maybe you're both wrong. Maybe only if she's producing a ksuba does she collect. Eloi, if she's not holding ksuba, like kafir, she doesn't collect. Either because we're concerned that maybe um, she's going to produce a ksuba a different time and collect another time. Or because if he wants, he can say, I paid up. How do you know? You, 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 you're rebuking and saying, Allah, and you're doubling down saying, I don't even need your Allah, it's a Mishnah. He's saying, what, 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 what Mishnah? He says, you don't see from here that, ah, uh, maybe it's talking about when, when you don't write a ksuba. So then fine, you don't write a ksuba, then she's believed. When you're at Iksuba, if she doesn't produce Iksuba, no, she's not believed. So the Mabai, the Nabai retracted and says, no, it's not true. Love it's, 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 not, it's not true what I'm saying. That when, when, you, when you write Iksuba, that he would be believed to say Parati, which he wants to refute the teachings, is not true. Because these talking about the Hebrew thing to say. But Malcolm Shane Kazin Kazuba Askina that the Mishnah Gitten was only talking about in the place where you don't write Iksuba. Avobad, but Malcolm Shane Kazuba, when you write Iksuba, in the kit, like he's just repeating what he wanted to say. In the kitik suba gabi, that if she's holding suba, then she collect eloi. But if not, like gabi, she does not collect the suba, which is what I wanted to say to refute your biyechanon and to refute your bchir braba. No, it can't be. Why? And I'll prove it to you. Amanim in a widow who was only engaged. Now, not our engagement, halachic engagement. That he really gave her the ring. That even in a place where they write subas, they don't write a suba from erusin from engagement. They write it by the chupa by nesuin. Such a widow, but my gavia, how is she going to collect a ksuba? Obviously, when there's witnesses who testify that the husband died, because again, she's widowed, she's not divorced, and you get a ksuba either if the husband dies or, 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 or divorces, she would get it when, the, when, when she brings witnesses that her husband died. Her chasen. Question is, let the yairish, let the inheritor of the husband claim, you could say, I paid it up. Because you told me, the b'malkam shekaisin ksuba, that you could say parati. Now, chitim, you're going to say no, no, hachinami. That you're going to say yeah, yeah, you're right. 
that they, in such a case, they could say perati. What did the chacham gain with their takana that they instituted a, 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 a narusa, a woman that was only engaged, gets a ksuba, but everyone's going to claim perati. Everyone's going to say, we paid. So, therefore, Abayi says that it can't be that the Mishnah is talking about the Mokkam Shein Kaisin Ksuba, because if that would be the case, then what would be the case with a Namanam the Eresin? Meaning, if you're saying that the Mokkam Shein that that they could say Parati, then, then, then a Narusa will never get, because even though it's a Mokkam Shein they don't write for Narusa, and, and you tell me that you could say Parati in such a situation. So on, now the Gemara asks Mechlal on Abaya. Only Mark Kashisha Bered of Chizla Ravashi says, wait a second, Ramana isn't this like Suba Manolan? Where do you know? I Meaning Abaya's premise of, of refuting himself was for Namonam and the Erisin. <coughs> that she gets like Suba, and what, 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 what she, how she get like Suba? You told me that, uh, that Bamakam Shakaisvin, you could say Parati, and, 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 and Arusa is Bamakam Shakaisvin, you just don't write it for her. So, so, so you said that you proved that obviously you're wrong, but, but where do you know this from? That I'm on them and Erisin gets Exuba. Ile mo not everything from the Mishnah Masech Tzuba says says like this says in this armloid in this garsha, if a woman is widowed or divorced, beim and erisin, beim and suin, whether from engagement or from marriage, aluch is goy b'sakol, she collects the whole thing, whether the ksuba of which is the 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 conditions of the courts that's a hundred for a widow or two hundred for a virgin, whether all the additions, she collects everything. Now, you see from there that a uh, uh, from erisin. If you're Almana, you get Exuba, because this, it says Nisarmala, and it says Beiman Erison. It says, that's not a Raya. Maybe that's not where he wrote one for her. But automatically, who says that she gets Exuba? Because a person could obligate himself. Chitim may begin to say, well, my Lamemra, then what would be the purpose of telling us? Of course he could give her Exuba uh, if he writes it for her. So it says, that's not difficult. That might be left for Kabir Abba Because he says, Shalit Kasabla, that the husband does not write the add-ons that he write on to the ksuba, only with the intention of marrying her. But if he doesn't end up consummating the relationship, let's say they get divorced or widowed, and she's still a an, narusa, an then she won't get it. It's a chalei. That's, that's what this Bryce had to say, that no, this, that, 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 that the missioning ksuba had to say that, that, yes, she does collect everything. And actually, they cannot be a precise reading of the Mishnah actually indicates that it's actually talking about that he wrote it for her specifically, and that it's not an automatic, and actually it's not a Raya Tabai who says that Lamon and Erison has a Ksuba. Because the Ketani, the Mishnah says, Goybes Hakoil. This woman uh, collects the whole thing. Now, yeah, I'm some of the cause, but if it's talking, I understand the Bishnah where he explicitly wrote one for her. And the Ketani, that's what the Mishnah is saying, Goybes Hakoil, she collects the whole thing. Because it's referring to whatever it is. Now, Eli Amitil Kazab, but if saying he didn't write it for her, you tell me that she gets automatically Iksuba. So as a continuing top of your Tresim and Alav, my Goyvesa Kul. What's this that she collects the whole thing? If you're telling me that he didn't stipulate anything, anything with her, you're saying it's just automatic. So what are the additions? Manamasaim Hudisla. She only has 100 or 200. So um, from that itself, it seems to indicate that. Um, that, that he wrote it to her. And if that's the case, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a raya to a bai. So the Gemara says, okay, the Ella, rather, meditoni ravchir ba'ami. So I'm the following, Brais of ravchir ba'ami. It says, ishte yarusa. If his wife is a kala, the Allah is, loy oinen. There's no aninis that takes effect on the husband, that if he's a koyin, he's not allowed to partake of kudshim. Which is on the day that one of his close relatives passed away. If she's only engaged, he does not make him an oinen, limitamala. He's a kayan, he's not allowed to make himself richly impure to her. Like it says, Kimlish Eiroi. One of the exceptions is the seven close relatives that refers to his wife. A kala is not She'eroi because they didn't yet come to closeness of the skin, which is what She'eroi refers to. And the so too, the other way around, if he dies, she is loyonanis, she does not have a lach of oinen. And she does not make himself tamito to him. So as Rashi points out, that's not because of Isra of Kahuna. Because female kahenas are not prohibited regarding the laws of Tuma. Because it says B'nai Aaron and not B'nai Saren. It just means she does not have to make herself tamito to him. Not if she's a kahenas, not if she's Yisraelis. Because there is a mitzvah to be engaged with the burial of the seven 
close relatives that says they're in the parish, or like it says, Lo Yutamo, which a Bryson teaches that's a mitzvah. And if the person doesn't want to, they make him, we make him tell me uh, forcibly. There was a story with Yesu Akoyin, as it brought him to his him. So we're saying here, but they were only engaged. She doesn't have to. Then it's not considered as one of the seven close relatives that you have to make yourself tell me for. Now, continues the Bryson Mesa. If she dies, Eino Yersha, he does not inherit her because. The Yerush of the husband, we learn that from She'era Kara Velov, Me Mishpachta, Be Yerusha Isa, the Gemar Babasat of Kofial and Alpha and Beis. Like we said, she's not She'era, because they're only engaged, so he does not inherit her. Mais who, and this is the main point, if he dies, Kaiva Ksubasa, she collects her Ksuba. Ah, and they were only engaged. It's Narusa. Ah, so you see, Narusa gets a Ksuba. So it's Gemar, what's the right? Demon the Kasabla. Maybe someone where he wrote her Ksuba. I'm going to say the Chazam Lev, he wrote a my memo. What's the Chiddush? You're right. That's not the Chiddush. Chiddush is the other flip side. We said, Mesa, if she dies in the Yarsha, he doesn't inherit her. It's okay. That was necessary to tell us. Because oftentimes we give certain rights to the, to the husband. But for her and the Chalami, that was where he, where he, meaning to say, even though she's inheriting him, meaning that the contrast, meaning even though she's inheriting him, he does not inherit her. Because he wrote her a Ksuba. But it doesn't, there's no such ksuba that she writes for him the other way around. He doesn't inherit her. That's the Chiddush. So there's no raya that's automatic. So the says, Eli, you're rather you're right. Abaya that said previously <coughs> that um, that la milsi the amri that he says not true what I'm saying what I'm trying to refute the biyechin and rechibar abba migufa de masnitin from the Mishnah itself in the mesech that's getting over there of haitzia get he had a difficulty with the Mishnah itself. That's why called the That's why he retracted from his question. Because as follows, these are good that we think to say that the reason is not because of Rabbi Yechanan, that you can't not make a claim Acher Maisa Bezdin. Rather, it's like what Abaya wanted to say, because it's simply B'Mokam Shen Kaisin Ksuba Askin. It's a place where they wrote, don't write a Ksuba, and when you don't write a Ksuba, the Allah is the Get Hainu Ksuba. So, well, the Get is like her Ksuba, and that's why he cannot make a claim. Uh, after it, but if they wrote a ksuba, he would be able to say, I paid, I paid it up. But ought to get, you think you get mana masayim ksibbe? You think it, it, it says anything in there um, about 100 or 200 that we could say that it proves regarding the debt of him owing her the ksuba? And if you're going to say, given that you can rabban the that yes, since the rabban instituted that, that she could collect command the it's as if it's written in the get. Because we know there's a set amount that they made for the Ksuba, 100, 200, and she's producing a get to show that she's divorced. Then Litin Belema Parati. Why can't he claim and say, I paid it up? So, if you're going to say, because we tell him, if you had paid it up, you should have then torn up the get. Amalan had told us, what do you mean? She didn't let. Amashi says, I need the get to show that I could get remarried. So it couldn't tear it up. But Chitim may be going to say, wait, I mean, let me tell him, no, it's not true. You should have torn it up and written on it. This get that we tore up, it's not because it's an invalid get. It's only because that she shouldn't collect another time, which is actually what the best does in such a situation. So, so then what would he say to that? Ah, oh, on that the answer is, you think anyone who pays up a debt the Beidin and Migvi, you think they always paid up in court? That he came to court? But two of them, when he paid it to her, they were not in court that they should write such a thing. So, oh, so obviously that the reason is, so then why, so why don't we believe him? He has a valid claim. He could say, I paid up. What do you want me to pay up? She didn't have a ksuba. There's only a get. I can't hear the get. She says she wants to get remarried. And they weren't in court for the court to write that. So obviously that the reason why he's not believed is because ain toinen achamay sebezim. If someone toinen achamay sebezim, let me call him. He doesn't say anything. That's why Bai retracted from his uh, refutation of the raya from the mission. Thank you. Anytime. Most of you